and welcome back to another episode of With Whom on Zoom. I'm Hamish Gray from Voice Magazine, and today I'm joined by Senior Policy Officer of Crisis, Ruth Jacob. Uh, Ruth, it's lovely to have you here. How are you feeling today? Yeah, really good, thank you. Right. Uh, for our first question, I was just going to ask a little bit about you, what your role is at Crisis and how long you've been there? Uh, yes, yeah, so as you said, my name is Ruth. Um, I work in the policy team at Crisis. Uh, so my role primarily involves uh, trying to identify and find the solutions uh, that will help us to end homelessness for good and then campaigning to make those changes a reality. Um, and I've been, I've been actually at Crisis for about four years now. Yeah, brilliant. And could you give us a bit of explanation of what Crisis is and what it's aims are and, and, and the goals that they work towards? Yeah, so Crisis is a national charity. We work across England, Scotland and Wales um, and we're a charity for people who are experiencing homelessness. Uh, we work both directly with people to help people out of homelessness, but we also campaign for the social changes that are needed to solve homelessness altogether. Um, so we, in terms of through our services, we provide help to people so that they can rebuild their lives. Um, and that really depends on the individual support that someone needs. It's really personalized. We offer one-to-one -one support, uh, we offer advice, courses, um, and we're constantly trying to improve our services through research and doing research to find out how we can kind of change, make changes in the wider world that will help to end homelessness for good. Okay. And through the process of working for crisis, are there any misconceptions you've seen about homelessness that you'd most like to be addressed? Yeah, I think there's actually two, um, two really big misconceptions that we'd like to address. Um, firstly, I think that homelessness is not just rough sleeping, but actually there are lots of forms of homelessness that are much less visible um, than people sleeping on the streets. So that might include people staying for long periods in, in temporary accommodation where they don't have uh, they don't have their own bathroom, they don't have their own cooking facilities, they might not even have access to that room um, kind of 24 hours a day. We also know that there are lots of people who are sofa surfing, so um, not knowing kind of where they might stay each night, kind of relying on different family, friends, acquaintances and, and not being able to settle and not having their own private space to live in. So I think that's the first thing. The second thing is the idea that the that homelessness can't be solved, that it's inevitable in some way, um, and it's something that will always exist in our society. And we just know that that isn't true and that the solutions do exist, and um, that homelessness, it can be ended. We can prevent people from experiencing homelessness in a lot of cases. And where it isn't possible to prevent people from experiencing homelessness, we can make that, that experience of homelessness really short and we can support people to move quickly into a proper home so that we don't see. Um, people spending long times uh, sofa surfing or rough sleeping or or anything like that. We um yeah, I think it's absolutely key to kind of get the message out there that we can end homelessness. It is possible. And so you feel there is a sense of almost inevitability and hopelessness that you want to you know eliminate. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think we know that with the right solutions, that if there are we you know building enough affordable homes, helping people to uh, to stay and to get good jobs um, and strengthening that benefit system and the safety net so that when, if you do fall on hard times, there's support there to help you. Right. And um, going back to the first misconception you talked about, um, tell me if I'm wrong here, but it's sometimes referred to as hidden homelessness, this different forms of homelessness. It is difficult to gain statistics on that. How prevalent do you feel hidden homelessness is in the, in yeah. the UK specifically? Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely a significant issue. And I think, like you said, official statistics only capture part of that um, picture. We get kind of estimates of the number of people who are rough sleeping and we get estimates of the number of people who are being helped by their local authority. But not everyone's eligible to get help from their council. And lots of people will be homeless but won't be rough sleeping or won't be kind of visible to the um, to services because they're experiencing other forms of homelessness. Uh, so we actually commission um, Harriet Watt University in Scotland to provide estimates of the number of people that are experiencing the worst forms of homelessness um, across Britain. And um, so that includes rough sleeping, but it also includes people uh, sleeping in cars, tents on public transport, um, 
staying in night shelters, staying in hostels, safer surfing and other forms of, of really unsuitable temporary accommodation. And so looking at kind of the last year that we have um, estimates for in 2020, they estimate that around 200,000 people, and that's just in England, were experiencing those kind of most extreme forms of homelessness. And more than half of those were safer surfing and experiencing that kind of more hidden homelessness. So there's a huge, a huge number of people there that aren't being necessarily helped and aren't being captured by the official kind of statistics. They're far more prevalent than people would assume. Yeah. And for the wider population, what advice would you give for people who want to help combat homelessness, whether on a larger scale, like charities like Crisis, or on a personal scale, if they know someone who is either struggling with homelessness or maybe they're at risk of homelessness? Yeah, on a personal level, um, if someone that they know or someone that they're aware of um, through their connections or through they see sleeping on the streets, then there's kind of a number of different things that people can do depending on how what they feel comfortable with. Um, so simply kind of stopping and, and talking to someone about their experience and stopping for a conversation and, and can make a really big difference. I think homelessness can be, we know from the people that we support, a really isolating experience. And so actually stopping to, to speak to someone to ask someone what they want, what they need, if there's anything that you can do to help um, is, is a really big thing. Um, people can also contact a street link and you can ask someone if they'd like to, you to contact street link for them and that will put them in touch with homelessness services in their area. Um, you can also direct people to kind of expert advice. Um, so crisis, we have services in 11 different areas across Britain, but in other areas, there will be other homelessness services. So helping people to find out who those services are in their area um, and getting so they can get some expert advice to actually help them to move out of homelessness uh, can be, have a huge impact. Um, on a kind of a, a wider scale in terms of like bringing about those kind of changes at maybe a government level, we'd really encourage people to sign up to be a crisis campaigner. Um, you can go on our website, search uh, for the crisis um, campaigns. And there you can sign up to be a campaigner and kind of support our campaigns and, and the actions that we're trying to bring about to, to actually influence some change in government um, and different policies that we know will, will actually help people to get the support that they need to move out of homelessness. Excellent. So like you said earlier, there are always ways to help and contribute. Yeah. And yeah. for our final question, I wanted to ask about government policy over the last 18 months and whether or not you've seen any relevant changes in terms of you know in COVID or other factors and if these have been impactful in a, in a positive way or, or possibly a negative way? Yeah we've actually um we've seen a huge impact I think over the over the course of the pandemic we saw uh, just before the first lockdown was announced uh, last year the government um take really transformative measures to to protect people who are experiencing homelessness to recognize how vulnerable uh, people who don't have their own home are to COVID um, and are how much more at risk people are. So the government actually instructed local authorities to help everyone who was sleeping rough or staying somewhere where they couldn't properly self-isolate into emergency accommodation where they would have their own room with their own washing facilities. And that undoubtedly saved lives. It had a huge impact. Um, and there was, we saw a really unprecedented effort between local authorities um, and homelessness services across the country. Um, and in the end, within the latest kind of, over the course of that kind of first year of the pandemic, we saw around, around 37,000 people were supported into um, like emergency accommodation, often in hotel rooms. And um, so people had that really stable place where they could then begin to actually get some help um, to, whether for like health conditions and um, help to access benefits um, and kind of slowly then help to move on into a long-term home. So that had, that had a huge impact. And I think it really showed what can be done if the political will is there, because that really happened overnight and, and it was a huge change. But now I think we're seeing, we're seeing some of that going away. Um, and we're, I think we're at a point where we really, there's a real risk that we will go back to how things were before. And we'll see as we're kind of already seeing in London, the numbers of people sleeping rough slowly start to rise again. So we really need to see the government taking the lessons 
um, of like what was so successful about what they did during the pandemic and applying that to the future and setting out a strategy for how going forward we're going to build on that we're going to learn those lessons and we're going to actually put in place the measures that need to be there to actually help everyone who's experiencing homelessness and take down some of those barriers that prevent people from getting support at the moment so it's before for the pandemic that stuff can be done in, in almost a, a, if you take emergency measures and it must be frustrating if you see that going backwards again exactly well, yeah and um, thank you very much for coming on and, and talking to us about it. To those of you at home, I've been Hamish Gray. Thank you for tuning in. And if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Take care. Thank you.